we'll start by giving you a bit of context of when, why, and what is the Blue Cloud mission. Um, okay, so um, let's talk about the acquisition of marine and ocean data. We do that uh, for many purposes, conservation directives and so on. And in Europe, we spend uh, more than 1 billion euro a year for marine data acquisition, um, according to uh, a NEMO-NET study. So if we look at the European landscape of marine data management, we, you know, starting from the, the bottom, we see that there are the operator of instruments you know, uh, that you know, operates the instruments to gather and collect the the ocean data sorry i was popped up with them um, and on top of them uh we have the a number of aggregators for data and service providers and here we see some examples such as uh, cdatanet imodnet the copernicus marine services uh, and much more then we have uh, the intermediate user, so the users of marine information. And so here comes Blue Cloud. So Blue Cloud is the our marine thematic contribution to the European Open Science Cloud that started in 2019, at the end of 2019, and will last until March uh, 2023. It has a, number, a total of 20 partners among, you know, uh, industrial partners uh, and mostly scientific partners and uh, uh, the mission of Blue Cloud is to promote the sharing of data processes and research findings in the marine domain by delivering a collaborative web-based environment that enables open science and here it comes the virtual research environment that we are going to talk about today the virtual research environment uh, basically uh, provide access to a wealth of marine data resources and interoperable added value services and products. So the overarching uh, concept uh, of Blue Cloud are uh, depicted in this slide. So from the bottom, we see uh, the upstream, a number of services that we call upstream services. And here, say the major of, of this service is the discovery and access service. Basically, services to allow the discovery and access to data set from many resources. Which are the resources? We're, we're going to see uh, in, in the next slide. But basically, the, all the collector and the aggregators of the ocean data that uh, Blue Cloud federates. Uh, and then we apply common standards for uh, interoperability solutions, providing harmonized metadata and data. And on top of them, uh, a number of added value services and application, um, basically uh, <clears throat> in, in the VRE and the cloud flat platform. So the VRE uh, provides user with an array of, array of services for configuring and running virtual laboratories uh, that tackle specific analytical workflows, use cases, and demonstrators. Now we see here in this slide, the federation of the major infrastructures that Blue Cloud uh, federates, actually federates. So on the left, uh, on, on your left, you can see uh, the, the what we call the blue data infrastructure. So the the, 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 the data infrastructures that are federated by Blue Cloud and that can be uh, accessed, can be queried, uh, you know, where the user can look for when they need to uh, search for uh, data sets of interest for their research. And on your right, you see the e infrastructures. So, uh, technological and distributed infrastructures that provides the, say, the cloud platform allowing users to uh, execute models on the data retrieved on the Blue Data infrastructures. So what are the key products and services of Blue Cloud? So you, you uh, the, the, we start from the, the data discovery and access service. So the, the ones that allows you to uh, 
uh, you know, uh, find and retrieve multidisciplinary data set from multiple repositories, the ones that we saw just before. Then we have the VRE, Virtual Research Environment Infrastructures, that provide a range of services and, facil and facilitate the orchestration of computing and analytical service for constructing, hosting, and operating specific virtual laboratories and applications. And on top of these, uh, we have the demonstrators. We have uh, the virtual laboratories that uh, are configured with the specific analytical workflows that serve as demonstrators and can be adopted and adapted for other inputs and analysis. So we need to have a number of, say, uh, demonstrators that, you know, proves that the, the, the work of the, you know, and, and the, the, the capacity of, of the Blue Cloud VRE and the Discovery Data Access Service is, you know, uh, useful for their needs. And this is uh, what we are going to see today, the VRE. The VRE is accessible uh, via the Blue Cloud Gateway, that is a web portal running on HTTPS blue-cloud.d4science.org. It runs on the D4Science infrastructures. And here on your right, you see the, the dashboard that is the landing page for registered users of the VRE. And uh, I think I can stop here and go directly on the VRE to give you a quick tour of uh, its functionalities and uh, describe you also uh, uh, the virtual labs that are accessible on the VRE. So we'll now stop the sharing and uh, go directly on the browser. Okay, just give me a second. There you go. Can you see the Blue Cloud Gateway on your screen? Yeah. Okay, great. So here we have, say, the, the, the home, the public page of the Blue Cloud Gateway. In here, you, uh, if you're not registered, you can have a look of, uh, of, of the virtual laboratories that uh, are available in the Gateway. You can also get, say, information of them each of uh, the virtual laboratory has um, uh, a dedicated page uh, you know with the description of, of, of what they do some videos and the partners that are involved but then if you register so ah, okay you can access of course the data discovery and access service you can see from here now if you you can register to the gateway as yes, you know, anyone can register so you don't need uh, have a specific grant to register and when you do that um uh, so i am um let me just um, sign out so that i can show you a user that is not logged in so when you register you have different uh, options so you can um uh, logging with your academic credential or let's say LinkedIn, Google, Twitter, or GitHub credential. You can create an account by providing your, uh, you know, your data, email, and uh, even choosing the password. This is up to you. Now we'll enter with uh, my Google credential, and I will be taken to the Blue Cloud dashboard page. So the dashboard page uh, basically um, is a dashboard. So it uh, gives you quick access to the major, let's say, resources that are available on, on the VRE and not only on the VRE. So starting from, uh, let's say, the, the, the page, we can see that it, the, there is, uh, um, from the left, you can see that there is a, uh, uh, some statistics of the activity. Now, this is a testing user, so it is not that there is no activity. There is a link that allows you to access the data discovery and access services to the you know for, for the retrieval of datasets and data products. 
So if you click here, you you are taken to the to the to the Blue Cloud Data Discovery and Access Service, which is not part of this training, uh, but you know uh, um, it's there and you can use it for for doing your research. Uh, there is a part of, for the synergies with related projects. In the center, there is a, a news feed that uh, basically uh, collects and presents to the user the most recent posts of uh, of the demonstrators' virtual laboratories and on, of the other virtual laboratories, and you can access uh, them by clicking uh, um, on the links with the demonstrator name, for instance. On the right, you have uh, a number of virtual laboratories. Some of them are used uh, for, say, project activities and discussions and are not open to the external member. Others are open to the external members, such as the Blue Cloud Lab. We will want to see that. Uh, and then there is a list of uh, the five demonstrators that have been, you know, constructing on top of the virtual research environment the service and we will briefly also touch them in this in this very training but i want to start with the horizontal services that the very provides to them say to, to the users and these horizontal services are available on the top bar uh, next to the to the uh, to the dashboard icon that you can see um here so uh from let's say that the, the this icon here the blue cloud getty dashboard icon has allow you to come back to this uh, to this page from anywhere in the in the in the portal then we have the workspace <coughs> the cloud storage solution for blue cloud if i access here you can see i this is, uh, you know, this is a cloud storage solution supporting the, the of course, the search of files, but also the, the sharing of folders and files with the other members of the VRE. It supports uh, links sharing uh, uh, in, as private, so only to the members of the VLabs you belong to also. also uh, link uh, uh, shareable links to to as public so that anyone with a link can download it, and it supports all, also the sharing of uh, folder links. So uh, we'll, we will see that as well later. Of course, you can upload, uh, you know, with drag and drop, and uh, you know, also archives, and it. Uh, the workspace keep tracks of any file version transparently. So if you upload a file with the same name in the same location, uh, the file is not deleted. The previous file is not deleted, but uh, and then automatically a new version is uh, created by the system for you. And then you can access the previous version. So next to the workspace icon, you have the catalog icon. So the Blue Cloud catalog icon that we are seeing here, six bit drawing. So here you will find data products and resources of interest to the Blue community. And in particular, this catalog features data set and products resulting from the Blue Cloud Virtual Laboratories uh, methods that generated them. Um, there are a number of uh, each catalog item in this catalog is accompanied with a, 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 a metadata uh, schema and a number of metadata that you know allow you to uh, um, allows to enhance the say the fairness of the products um, of the catalog here you can also you can search for the items you can also browse them by you know the products that each of the uh, demonstrator as published so far. So, for instance, if I want to see what uh, the zoo and phytoplankton essential ocean variables virtual lab has uh, published, I can click here and I can see that they have published uh, seven items so far. Um, if you want to see uh, this data set here, this is a spatial temporal analysis of you know plankton drivers in the Belgian part of the North Sea. 
and it contains data, scripts, and model output. There are a number of data and resources attached to this, uh, to say, to this uh, catalog item. We can see also the, the, you know, some information about the author, the spatial coverage, and the access modality. If you want to access the the resources, we can click on the resources and uh, and we can download. Um, we can download the, the, for instance, the results here of uh, of this um, of this uh, of this special data temporary analysis that uh, um, there is now loading. It should arrive. So probably it's taking some time because there are a lot of uh, small files. Yes, indeed. Uh, so there are a number of hundred of CSV files that have been produced in this uh, detailed simulation. And, you know, you can also download them one, uh, as a single zip. Uh, okay, going back next to the, say, the book icon that takes you to the catalog, there is the envelope icon for the messages. This is a simple, let's say, um, a simple uh, uh, messaging application, private message application that you can use uh, to exchange private message with with other user of of the the infrastructures. So if I want to uh, if I want to email the other user, I can you know can select them and I uh, can write a subject. I can attach files from the workspace. So one of the is being the cloud storage solution, the port space we we'll see is accessible by any every application of the VRE. So I, I can also attach a very large file that is present in the workspace, space, and then I can send the message. And then there is the possibility to search on where they say the newsfeed messages of the infrastructure. Now let's Let's look at the Blue Cloud Laboratory, the Blue Cloud Virtual Lab. Uh, this is an example of, uh, you know, the say a virtual laboratory that contains a lot of also analytical tools that user can can exploit for doing the research, and it's open to the public. So what I'm going to do here, you can do it on your own after this presentation, or meanwhile, if you. If you wish. So to enter, just you know, click on the name Blue Lab, and you just click confirm request, and you will be automatically registered on the on the virtual lab and taken to the virtual lab home. Here in the home page, we see a number of uh, analytical tools that are available in this virtual laboratory. We have for instance, um, a cluster of uh, Jupyter Hub that uh, enables the exploitation of, of uh, you know, computational environments and resources without burdening users with installation and maintenance tasks. We're going to see Jupyter Hub now, but uh, know that it can be pre-configured pre -configured with the libraries and packages to ease the execution of your own analytical tasks. So if you have a number of, uh, uh, say, Python libraries or other libraries that you need to have pre-configured in your Jupyter app instance, we can do that. And uh, the cluster supports maximum instances, instances of eight cores, up to eight cores, and 32 gigas of, of RAM per notebook. Then we have our studio. If you, you know, uh, are skilled and accustomed to our studio and in, in the R language, of course, R can be used also in Jupyter, Jupyter notebooks, but if you are accustomed to our studio, uh, you have the R studio here. Then we have um, the analytics engine, and the determiner is the name of this software products from different science uh, that permits the execution of a number of uh, analytical methods that are uh, um, already written for you. So there are a number of analytical methods available that can be just, you know, uh, executed on the infrastructure by entering the, the, 
the, the parameters that they expect. Uh, but you can also import your own model in the analytical engine, we will see, um, by using uh, a software importer facility that is available in each virtual laboratories. Then there is the catalog. Uh, this is, uh, let's say, a dedicated catalog, so a subset of the whole book out catalog um, that is uh, um, available uh, and uh, to, to the members of this this uh, this virtual laboratory only. And here on the right bottom, you can see a shared say a shared workspace folder that is uh, automatically shared with all the members of this virtual laboratory where you know uh, we can uh, the members can upload the slides files of you useful files for the other members of the virtual laboratory and if you want to we want to see who are the members of this uh, virtual lab we can click members and we can you know browse the the, the, the list of the members in in this case so uh i will go briefly in each of these let's say uh, squares to show you briefly jupyter hub bar studio and the analytics engine so let's move uh, let's start from jupyter hub so we have a number of uh, let's say predefined uh, environments uh, you know in this case um, in this in being a demonstrative uh, laboratory, virtual laboratory, we have a very large, uh, say, a number of, uh, of several options here, but uh, in, you know, you can restrict this and, uh, you know, I have, I have much, much less uh, separate option just dedicated to do your own virtual laboratory. So uh, let me start just one, for example, so in this case, the, the server is automatically created uh, for you and uh, is being, you know, a virtual machine a container is being spawned in this moment. And you have the, the classical launcher of Jupyter Hub here. What is important to not to notice here is the predefined folders that are um, that are available in this environment. Um, because you can you can see there is uh, one folder already there that is called workspace and this is exactly workspace that I show you before the one that you can access by clicking on the workspace icon on the top but this is accessible within blue cloud and also there is um, there is another uh, let's say a remote folder uh, this is called the cloud data space and here we can see um, a number of uh, data sets and files that are uh, uploaded by uh, users of the Jupyter Hub uh, servers in, in Blue Cloud. And uh, you can see uh, what is, if you, if you wonder what is the difference between the two remote folder is basically the the, let's say the, the, the quality of, of, of service in the sense that um, the Blue Cloud data space uh, is very fast and um, is, is, is basically located in the same, uh, in the same, physically in the same server of, or in the same farm of the, of the Jupyter cluster server. Um, it is very large and very and say very fast but it does not support replication fault tolerance and other characteristics that are supported uh, by the workspace folder so the workspace is not physically mounted on the same server uh, it's a bit slower but supports uh, you know uh, a number of uh, features such as fault tolerance replicas and uh, versioning that is not supported in the, in, in the other one so depending on the work on the type of research that you need to do you can choose between the two if you want to access the R studio instead you click here and the R studio service is uh, open for you so even in this case it takes a second 
Let me just give it uh, some time. Okay. It's loading. Now in this case, uh, we are using um, some nodes that are physically located in uh, in Sicily, in Catania, basically, and that are provided by the uh, GAR, that is the, the feder is, is federated by the first science, that is the, uh, let's say, the, the network and services for, you know, uh, university and research centers in Italy. Here I have a, my, my, you know, I can use our studio if I want. And even here, it is uh, beneficial to see that the workspace is mounted automatically. So and again, if you have, you know, your data set on the workspace, on the Blue Cloud workspace, you can access them from from our studio as well. So you can find the 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 related related for them. You can also you know write the file back if you wish. Then let's go back to the lab home. Let's briefly see the analytics engine that permits the execution of uh, say out of the box algorithms that have been published by other members of the of the of the virtual laboratory. So here you can see a number of, um, uh, let's say, methods that have been, or models that have been added and then you can execute directly on the on this interface. And uh, we will see that you can also get, a, um, you know, a URL that you can use. So let's just, um, briefly check, uh, you know, run one, uh, one simple, very simple um, algorithm or, or a method in this case, just, you know, to show you how it works briefly. So in this case, I have a very simple algorithms that sort words in a list that I published, you know, sometimes in, uh, before this, 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 so this morning, just, just for the sake of this, uh, training and this this basically just um, e uh, expect a, a, a file uh, with the words in input uh, we can also see it if you if you let's see what I, what is the input just give ah, okay you don't see it because it's uh, it's not shared uh, anyway um, just let me uh, I, will, I will show you later anyway I can give you a csv with a number of words i can start the computation now the 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 say the the software is being uh, uh, you know published on the say computing platform of the virtual search environment it is a, just an example very easy very quick so nothing fancy here when it the computation completes i, I can see the load the log of the computation i can see also i can download the results so again i don't think you can see it Perhaps it is worth to see. Just give me a second. Uh, okay. Uh, so I stop share and I will share my desktop so you can see everything. Uh, so the output file of the the it's just a simple, you know, this is the output file. And before I had the input file. And so, but anyways, it was, you know, very, very easy, very easy algorithm. But let's focus on the, on the peculiarity here. The peculiarity is that you can not only check the computation that you performed so far. So this is the, the one that I've just ran at uh, 2.32 uh, Rome time here. For each computation performed, I can see the, the a number of, of uh, um, say, metadata. I can see the, the, the computation, exact computation that I ran with the parameters. I can see what the input data set were. So here we can see the what was the input data and uh, some metadata about it. I can see 
the output data sets that were the result of the composition, so the, the CSV file and the log file, but I can also resubmit the exact computation if I want. So I can click resubmit and, uh, oh, sorry, let's try again. Perhaps it was too quick. Let's see. Uh, ah, it is in progress. Okay. Okay. It was in progress. I hope you can see it. Now it's starting and the submission was is now completed again. And so I have resubmitted the same exact computation with the same input parameters. But what I can also do is that I can get an equivalent get request. So a, a URL that I can pass to my colleague to execute the same exact computation simply by uh, passing them, for instance, on a browser. So if I now I copied it and passed it in the in my browser, and now the composition is being executed. As a result, I get uh, an XML that contains the two results of before, so the log of the computation and the result of the computation, and the link to download them. So this is the link that can be used to download the result of the computation. If I, again, pass it into the browser, I can see, again, the file of before. Good. Uh, so we we'll see the data miner, and the, the Jupyter Hub and our studio. So let's switch very quickly to see the work that uh, uh, um, the demonstrator are doing. So let's move to the, for instance, the zooplankton and uh, phytoplankton EOV products with a laboratory. Here you can see a welcome page and a number of how tos that explain the work that the the members and the, the researchers and the and the um, the researcher and the members of the demonstrator have done in this demonstrator so you, you can see that they have also built a step by step uh, guideline to choose, to use the service where they show that they have the products in the workspace, that they have created a Jupyter notebooks with uh, that they, you know, they put the Jupyter notebook available and they show, you know, uh, how can you use other data in this, in this uh, auto guide. So if you, you know, there are the auto service that you can you can uh, um, you can see the work that you're doing by accessing, for instance, the Jupyter Hub here and um, of the of the demonstrators. And if you go to uh, uh, to the workspace and uh, to the uh, folder of the demonstrator, you can find the the three notebooks that they have built and that are available. For, for the users with you know the the, the data the figure the results and uh, and uh, and everything so here you can have you know you see the source and, uh, and all basically the work of the demonstrator can be replicated and they executed on the virtual lab as you can see um, the notebook is nice because it provides also also the the a number of uh, uh, you know this text description that allow user to 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 understand the work that the researchers are doing and here is very well uh, documented so you can see they use the number of uh, data sets uh, from the blue cloud data infrastructures they use, use they've used the jupiter and a number of technologies so you can actually execute the code and uh, get, you know, reproduce, basically reproduce the, 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 the results by executing them on the, on the VRE. Okay, 
leave here, I will go back. And uh, I want to conclude the training by um, talking about the possibility of, uh, say, external institutions or external uh, companies or, uh, um, you know, university or uh, partners to, to join Blue Cloud, so to have their own virtual laboratories. And you can see we have already set up uh, two uh, virtual laboratories for the synergies with the other uh, projects. Probably some of you uh, are already, of course, are attending this, this, this very training. Um, I want to show you that it is possible also to integrate your own, uh, let's say, application. So in this case, here we can see uh, a web application that was developed in another demonstrator uh, for the is, is, in detail is this is the marine environmental indicator demonstrator. And here they have uh, built this web application, integrated this web application with the platform, uh, you know, by using the standard for authentication and authorizations that uh, the platform provides and the, the standards for executing a model. So they have integrated their models via the, the, say the software importer they have integrated their models in the infrastructure. They have built this web application and provided this application as Docker container to run on the infrastructure. And, and, and then the integration, the application is, is, uh, is available in the virtual lab. So I now run the, the one, one process. If I go into my request, you can see that, uh, um, the annual map sequence, uh, say, uh, process that I, I requested on a specific uh, uh, spatial coverage is being executed in the in the in the infrastructure. Here I can see the progress. So it takes uh, you know some uh, some time to 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 do, but and but you know anyway, uh, if I will find the, the the output of the process in the other. Uh, in the other uh, in the other let's say places of this application but this is just to let you know that in you, you can um, you can integrate your own application and we have a website for the say the developers so uh, uh, available um, uh, and we have a documentation for them so this is definitely one of the possibilities available